Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight is the story of two men. One, a childhood geek with disarmingly high pants, a milkshake philosopher, a flower munching hippie. A part-time Jesus figure. The other, a sportsman, a warrior, a binge drinker who first came to prominence when he pissed all over Santa. But it was years later that the psychedelic spaceman met the high school nerd. And this marriage of minds is here tonight to make science sexy. Ladies and gentlemen, press your loins to your cerebellums and give it up for Dr. Karl Krushelnitsky and DJ Adam Spencer. Hello. Yay. Good evening. How are you, Carl? Oh, so funky. Now, I don't need to go down into the audience and check that every single person has put their phone on silent because I trust these good people, Dr. Carl, and I know you, for one, are obsessed with the science of trust, aren't you? As is the Reader's Digest, and every year they have this fabulous survey where they look around the countryside and they pick the 100 most trusted people in a list, and Adam, this has been going on so long this Reader's Digest thing, it's been going back to when it was okay to have Mel Gibson on the front cover of anything. That's a while. Way back in, in 2005. And in that year, in the top 10 most trusted people, I came in at number seven most trusted nice. person in Australia. Well done, Dr. No, Carr. No, no, no. It, it, it's a sad story because what happened next in the year 2006, I'm sorry to say, I dropped down to position number, oh my God, number 11. Mm. And then there I am, here I am at position number 11. And then the next year after that, yeah, I dropped down in 2007 to position number 14. Now there was only one thing that I, as an ex-scientist, could do. Mm -hmm. I graphed it. Okay. And there's the graph. <laughs> and then the next year, um, in uh, 2008, I found myself back in my rightful position in the top 10 Australia's most 100 trusted people, and there I am, back where I properly Great belong. Stuff. And then the Reader's Digest did the dirty on me. Mm -hmm. They put me up against a guy who was incredibly handsome, a great dancer, married to a gorgeous woman, adopting children. God, he does everything perfect, wonderful. Abdo what, what chance did I have against, um, what's his name? Um, Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Hugh, I have a problem with names, Hugh Jackman. And in that year, I came in at position number 11. Here I am at position number 11. Mm -hmm. As you can see, proved by the graph, position number 11, edged out of my rightful place in the top 10 by my arch enemy, the Wiggles. Mm -hmm. This was the first year that they expanded the poll away from just who do you trust in general to certain specific situations where you might trust someone to drive your new car, to carry out your final wishes. They asked the question this year, who would you trust to be honest in an online dating profile? Now, for some of our more mature members of the audience, they might have already found their life partner before the era of online dating. Let me explain. You have these websites where you can go to meet people. You might want to meet people for wholesome activities such as marriage. You might want to meet people in a more short-term sense, but regardless, you can go to the web and find these things. And when they asked, who would you trust, to be honest, in an online dating profile? Congratulations, number one, top of the pops. 39%, Dr. Carl. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I should point out, this wasn't across the entire top 100. It was a smaller set. So, great, Carl, you did come first. The two people you beat were David Hicks <laughs> and disgraced AFL footballer Ben Cousins. So don't get too carried away. How did you go in your trustworthiness after that, Carl? Well, um, I don't know why you ask me that sort of stuff. 
okay, I dropped down to position number 12, and yes, here I am at position number 12. And well, I did what I could do initially as a scientist, so this time I did what I could as a mathematician. A, and linear, a linear regression analysis, nice. Yes, I am Y minus 0.6X minus 8.733, I'll have you know. It was a tough year the next year. They put you up against a series of medicos, but if anything, your former medical training might have kicked in here. It rubbed off, and so in the top 100 most trusted people, I appeared back, clawing my way back up to position number 10. Yes, with lots of arrows pointing at it. And yes, here I am, where I belong, at position number 10. Mm -hmm. How did it go in the year 2012? We were very excited when the poll came out. We wanted to see how Carl went. Who do you trust in 2012? But the other reason I love this poll every year, not just do I get to see Carl going up and down in the numbers, but also it shines a spotlight on the entire nation. Where is our national psyche at any given point? How can we compare certain people in terms of their trustworthiness? Robert French is the Chief Justice of the High Court of Australia. I'd guess he's a fairly trustable dude. He ranks number 52, exactly the same level of trustworthiness as Stephanie Rice, Olympic swimmer. <clears throat> I tell you what, Carl, I could trust her, but anyway, Number 30 in the national poll of trustworthiness is the Nobel laureate, Professor Elizabeth Blackburn. She's won a Nobel Prize for medicine. Surely that's trustworthy. It is, because as a nation, we trust her as much as we trust Kylie Minogue, who features in exactly the same spot. The Governor General, Quinton Bryce, number 27, nowhere near as trustworthy as your friend, the Wiggles, Carl, 2012. Number 17. Uh, well, the only thing I can say in favour of dropping so low is that, well, at least it's a prime number, but yes, you are right, there I am at number 17. And yes, there, there I have dropped, and there, there's a curve. Carl, you haven't just dropped. This year was the first year in charting your lack of popularity that we had to increase the size of the graph to take how far you had fallen into account. You are becoming more untrustworthy by the minute. You will be less trustworthy by the end of tonight's talk than you are right now. So get the good stuff out early. Don't freak out if some of it's a little bit heavy. We're not going to turn around at the end of the night and give you an exam, okay? Now there's two reasons we won't test you at the end of the night.